Hi again everyone, I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Nikki and here is her story. Hey Ollie, me again. Hope you're good. This email isn't for me but for anyone else who might be in the position I've been in and might need the support. Your video for Melissa, It's All Fruit of the Poisonous Tree, really re resonated with me and I wanted to get a few things off my chest. We have been no contact with my narc mother-in-law and enabling father-in-law since June this year. To give you some background on this particular narc, she was always right, never wrong, and had a severe case of God complex. For example, she was once a legal secretary probably 20 years ago. But if you were to talk to her about it now, she would tell you how she was practically running the place, knew it all, etc., etc., Oh, God, do, do, do we know the type? Once, we were having a conversation about children's parties, and I happened to mention that my husband, her ex-son husband, and I share, share out the duty of chaperoning our kids. They are five and seven now. She made a comment that, in their day, if Dad showed up at a kid's party, everyone would assume he was a pedophile. I said, then I'm very glad um, to not be living in your day because these days the women aren't expected to do all the parenting by themselves. To which she replied, well, I did. I was a superhero. <clears throat> and my spineless father-in-law, of course, laughed it off. So I guess by now you can begin to see what type of person she is. She could never be happy for us and always made every scenario about her. When we got engaged, when I fell pregnant, when we bought our first house, everything was about her in some way. There was always a reason to be mad with us. Periodically, over the space of about 10 years, she would have an almighty outburst over something nobody could ever pin a reason to. And if there was nothing to explode about, she would simply make something up, then sit alone and retired in her house dreaming up reasons why she was in the right and everyone else was in the wrong. Then she would send disgusting emails to my husband, telling him how awful we were. They have never been short of money, but they money grab at every opportunity. They live in a filthy but incredibly expensive house, and of course, as Ollie has pointed out in the past, they love pets, way more than people. I guess dogs are more on their wavelength. After each outburst of her rage would come an argument, and then a period of silence on both sides. Eventually the dust would settle and there would be an awkward text message, and there would be awkward text messages, followed by an awkward reunion, never an apology or an explanation for her behavior. What Melissa made me realize in her pinned comment underneath her video was that she still considers her narc mother to be loving and doing the things she is doing for them out of love. Melissa, she is not. The things she does for you is a way to control you and a way to have things to hold over your head if ever she should need them. It's a way to keep you feeling guilt and a way to keep you exactly where you are, no matter what she says or does to you. Ollie, you were right. Once you go no contact, you start to see things more clearly. The anger that got a hold of me over the past few months has been unimaginable. And my husband has been able, has been to therapy to talk about the way she treated him. Hearing Melissa talk about how her mother called her up in the morning to spew offense reminded me so much of the treatment my husband got from his mother. She would tell him, she would tell him he was a cunt, that he was useless, that he was a terrible father, anything to get a rise. And then, while late, then, and then, while later, she would announce she was going to buy us a new washing machine, or to take us to dinner. You get the idea. Six months of no contact, and we're happier than ever. It has been a process, and it isn't over. <clears throat> Since the narc still tries to make contact every so often, she won't succeed. She pushed our last button a while ago. 
the children ask about her occasionally and we told them that we won't be seeing grandma and grandpa anymore because they were very unkind to daddy. They have been sad about it from time to time, but I know that bit of sadness is nothing compared to how they might feel in another 10 years if we should remain in contact or the damage they could do potentially to turn your own kids against you because that's what they do. By cutting them out of our lives, we lost our place in their inheritance, a spot at their dinner table and a family that was whole. What we gained was our lives back. Good luck to anyone in this kind of position. I hope this helps. Nikki. You know, I don't know how many Seinfeld fans are out there, but this is like every day is Festivus with the narcissist. And if you know Festivus, it's a made-up holiday where, you know, what, what, one of the events of Festivus is the airing of the grievances. And boy, is the narcissist always ready to air their grievances on you, aren't they? Aren't they to just spill this shit out, aren't they? You know, did I saw the comment? I mean, obviously, I saw it. I pinned it in the in the video. It's hard to accept that you that that you were never loved. It's a hard thing to accept, and I think it's even harder for for women to accept it from their mothers. But it's a hard thing to accept, and you want to believe so that that you know somewhere deep down in their own way that they that they love you but they don't they don't they're incapable of it they wouldn't know what to do with it it would scare the shit out of them if it ever if they ever had it it's a hard it's a hard thing for some people to accept And holding on to that is dangerous because you, you end up letting your own family get sucked in and get abused the same way. You know, you can only hope, you know, you can, you can, you take people to the water, you can't make them drink. You know, you show it for them for what they, what it is. And, and, and Melissa answered me back in the, in the email, and she knows what I'm saying is right, especially about her father, especially about her father, you know, and it, it's a hard thing to accept that they not only don't love you, they want to destroy you, that their happiness, their success is based on your failure. That's who they are. That's who they've always been. So, thank you so much for your contribution and uh, and your story, Nikki. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comments section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to help it grow, expand, and keep going because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all of this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance.